We made our own NASA smart wheels because I've always wanted to see if they can work on Earth, but they just never seem to make it to market. Our ultimate goal is to design a tire that can support the weight of a full grown man on this little dirt bike. I think this is going to be a huge challenge because there's got to be a reason you can't buy these things yet despite being in development for several years. But we are going to try our absolute best to make them by starting with the smaller stuff so we can learn as much as possible before we move on to the big leagues and turn this pit bike into a lunar rover. And we're not gonna take it easy on them either because everyone on YouTube tells me they're amazing, but I just don't believe it. We're not in the lab anymore. It's time to throw the real world at these tires so we can stop pretending we need to adapt them to our earth vehicles. Our first test mule is a rock crawler because slower speeds are easier. In fact, lunar rovers are slow, very, very slow, like 0.1 miles per hour as a top speed. That's literally closer to the speed of a snail than it is to the speed of you walking. The first wheel design we're gonna test is just the simple metal slinky wrapped around a 3D printed rim. This is exactly how they explained it in the Veritasium video, by the way, so I'm not just making this up. This has to be clamped and bonded in place or the slinky would just kind of collapse and not do the job of a tire. I mean, literally, we are injecting epoxy in between all these little grooves to make sure it is held in place so it doesn't just lay over. Oddly enough, these don't look that far off from the Jeep they use in their marketing materials, which if you zoom in, it has a broken spoke. Obviously, there are challenges. All right, so we're ready to get out there and give it our first round of testing with this setup. These look more like kitchen appliances, like a whisk or a blender ball but uh, we kind of want to see what happens. And I know you're excited about it too, so let's get out there and test. So this is probably only like a 15, 20 degree angle and that thing is struggling, but it's gonna make it. These wheels are ridiculously loud. Give it a shot. These things make excellent drift tires on concrete because they have such a low coefficient of friction. And when you couple this with four wheel steering, we can do donuts all day, every day. They also make these super cool shadows. In the grass, they did even better. So this thing drives way better than we expected. All right, what do you think about the what do you think about the grass performance? Pretty good. Like, yeah. Very good. Yeah. But they struggled a little bit with loose material like mulch. Their first weakness, oh, you got wow. that stuck in there, which we kind of expected to happen. Big weakness behind non-sealed tires. I'm sure everybody saw this coming, but how well can they handle jumps? That's gotta be a weakness, right? Wrong. We launched it a few times, stepping up in intensity each time, and they held together with no noticeable deformation. This was a big surprise to me for reasons I'll cover later. All right, overall, what do you think? Uh, three out of 10. Three out of 10? Look at all that work I put into those. So that's a thousand out of 10, buddy. Then came the mud. And I think you can already see where this is going. Oh man, all that mud gets caked up in there. It is, this is gonna be gross. Not only did they sink in the mud, they collected the mud, all the mud. This weighed them down and made them very unbalanced. It drove terribly after this and it slowed it way down. I also thought they would self clean a little better, but they just don't. They just keep piling it up and slowing everything down. In the middle of filming this, we had a surprise snowstorm, and this doesn't happen much in Texas. At least not enough snow to sled on a skateboard deck and build a six foot snowman. This gave us the rare opportunity to test these tires in the snow, and as you might expect, they sink right through it straight to the ground. Absolutely no flotation whatsoever. But they actually do chew through the snow pretty well and keep plowing on. Oh, uh, dude, didn't, oh, it's moving, it's moving, we got it. The tires do get completely packed, just like the mud, except the snow self-clears a whole lot better. There was actually little difference in the stock tires compared to the slinky tires, but when it came to the ice, the slinkies actually dug in much better, 
I guess it's kind of like ice chains. I don't know, I don't live up north. Normally these tires are wrapped in some additional reinforcement, kind of like a metal mesh, but traction on road surfaces is still awful because metal on concrete, like I said, has a terrible coefficient of friction. So it's time to advance to the next generation of our smart tires. This thing is much faster and we're gonna try and launch it as high as we can to make sure it can handle the same type of impacts that we expect on the dirt bike. Just look at these massive logs in this rugged terrain that I've gotta be able to make it through. So we need more grip. It's a much lighter tire this time as well. So I'm a little worried we'll have a full on blowout, but we're putting a rubber band around it to help it grip on concrete. Maybe that'll add some support as well. This is somewhat similar to what's been advertised by the smart tire company. So hopefully we're on the right path. <laughs> it turns out we were not. These plastic hubcaps on each side are designed to keep the tread centered, but it can still slip right between the gaps while under driving forces. That's partly because I had designed the hubcaps to provide minimal radial support so I could be sure that the slinky was actually doing the work, just like the real tires, but I think that made them just too flexible in all directions. Either way, I think this is a job for duct tape. The adhesion to the rings and lack of stretch should help keep things in place a whole lot better. This time, we could actually build some real speed. We got decent grip in the turns and it was controllable. More importantly, it can still do some magnificent donuts and some great drifting. Beat it up. But we came here to launch this thing and that's just what we're gonna do as soon as I can weasel this quarter pipe out of the garage. <laughs> we got a little fake out first, but here we go. Hit the curb. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> after, after all that, we completely missed the ramp and just bend it straight into a curb. Talk about an impact test. But this thing can still drive, so it's going to the moon. Look at how amazing it flies. And occasionally we actually land it. A lot of times we just smash it into the front tires, do a couple rolls. We absolutely demolish these things, but we've also learned a lot in the process. The outer reinforcement around the slinky helps a lot with load sharing and the ability to continue operating when a portion of the wheel is damaged from a curb check. So this is from hitting the curb. That's from the landing. Back's okay. We also know that the slinky needs to be clamped and bonded very well to the rim or it'll immediately fold over under almost no load. I feel like that's enough to step up to the big leagues with the pit bike, so let's go. Oh, on a side note, we also made Mars Rover wheels and they looked awesome. We thought these were gonna perform really cool and we wanted to compare them to the slinky wheels, but they didn't last at all. Look at how terrible they perform under moderate acceleration. The only thing that worked was the leaf spring mechanism. It actually did what they're supposed to do on the real Rovers. All right, we think it's broken, broken. Oh man, so one of the problems with this type of wheel is it has like no moment stiffness this way and that's why it's so easy for it to contort and bend. Anyways, back to the main program. So I think the dirt bike tire is gonna be way harder to get to actually work because it's holding hundreds of pounds and it's a much bigger slinky. So my plan is that I have printed a few of these rings and I'm gonna kind of sandwich the slinky in between the rim and these 3D printed rings. I'm not sure any of what I just said makes sense, so this should clear it up. You can see it sandwiches it right on the rim. And then I have these heavy duty zip ties that'll go around all of those 3D printed rings and kind of cinch it in place from there. We're gonna bond this thing like we did on all the other tires so that hopefully the slinky itself stays roughly in the right position. But honestly, I don't know if this is gonna work. This one worries me. I also reinforced the slinky on this one with a metal mesh because I felt like that would be much stronger than duct tape. That's just science, which brings me to my next point. Pneumatic tires are already designed exceptionally well. And I find it hard to believe that some chain mail and a slinky can outperform modern tires, especially on earth where most of us drive our vehicles. The tires I took off of this thing do a great job over logs, through sand, uphill and downhill, and I can kind of do a wheelie. 
All right, truth be told, this wheelie thing is more down to a lack of driver skill than it has to do with the wheels, but let's pretend like I'm a lot better than I am. Most importantly, I can do a sketchy burnout in the mud without destroying the tire at all. But my main goal with this tire is to be able to drive on a relatively smooth ground without the tire destroying itself. I even had to transport this thing as carefully as possible so I didn't ruin it on the concrete before we even got to testing. I mean, look at how beautiful these wheels are. We can't let that go to waste. They almost look like the real deal. I mean, you can definitely tell they were cobbled together in a garage, but if you turn down the resolution just right, they're perfect. I don't really have much faith in this because I'm worried I can't even get it started without caving in that tire because I have to kick so hard. That did leave just a little dent in our moon tires, but maybe it'll work itself out after it rolls around. It did not. These things folded over like a cheap lawn chair right out of the gate. I might as well just be running on straight rims at this point. But there is one more question. Can it still wheelie? I think we got a few inches off the ground, so we'll chalk that up as a win. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself as a consolation for digging a hole in my lawn with these terrible tires. Check this out. It is absolutely demolished. And it makes this weird sound when I rotate it. It sounds like one of those rain sticks you played with in music class as a kid. I think that's just like a bunch of trash in there, but let's cut it open to find out. Now at this point, you're probably screaming at the top of your lungs about me using steel instead of nitinol. And you're mostly right, but I do want to point out that the original Lunar Rover tires were actually spring steel. I just didn't include the proper design features like bump stops, and I used a rectangular cross-section slinky. Instead of the circular cross-section, what really would have helped us quite a bit. Uh, but in saying that, I was going for the smart tires. That's where you're right. And I totally underestimated just how important it was to be able to deform as much as they do before they actually yield. So they can strain a lot with nitinol, whereas steel can't come close to that. So we really need to rebuild these. And I wanna do both the old school Lunar Rover style and the nitinol style. Now the problem with the nitinol is I need like 100 feet of nitinol wire. And that wire is gonna cost me like a thousand bucks. I'm not even sure if anybody else wants to see this. So I've opened up YouTube memberships in the event that there are people that are interested enough to actually spend just a few bucks to make this a reality. And we will give it our best shot. We'll do the molds, we'll do everything we think is required to make this work perfectly, and we'll compare it against a lunar tire. And obviously membership comes with a few other perks, so check it out.